He is currently the lead for the team of the GIS folks up in Sacramento, and he provides support for emergency oil spill response, oil spill contingency planning, natural resource damage assessment, drills, exercises, and training. So, here you go, Jeff. I'll turn it over to you. Test, test. Okay. Um, thanks for hanging around. Thanks for having me up here. If I look a little disheveled, it's because I'm in the middle of a oil spill drill about eight blocks away. Just came over here to do this. And I guess I'll just get right into it. Uh, so I'm going to talk about shipwrecks. Is there a, no, there's, yes. That's all right. Okay, so let me just get going here. It's a right here. Oh, there it is. Okay. Thanks. You just kill the lights a little bit? Uh, I don't know where they are. I saw somebody fiddling over here. We have an IT guy. Well, I'm going to talk by you. Oh, I'll find it, Judge. Yes. Okay, so there's three things I'm going to cover in this presentation. Okay, the two uh, shipwrecks that I was involved with, not the actual wreck, the uh, evaluation of the wrecks. <laughs> Uh, one is the uh, Jacob Luckenbach, <clears throat> uh, which was a uh, long-term mystery that we solved, and I'll get into that. Uh, the second one is the Montebello, uh, which was actually a proactive investigation of uh, World War II era shipwreck. Uh, how many people know that uh, a Japanese submarine torpedoed the Montebello offshore California during World War II? Uh, so some of you do know that, yeah. But I'll get into that as we go on. And then uh, I'm just going to give a summary uh, review of NOAA's most recent survey of offshore shipwrecks and their evaluation of what the, uh, the, the largest threats to the environment are. Okay, so getting into the Lukenbach. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this goes back to 1953. Uh, the Lukenbach had just uh, loaded up. They were full of... Uh, Jeeps and automotive parts. Uh, this was 1953. They were heading to South Korea supporting the war effort there. Um, they set sail. I think it was heavy fog. And here's the irony. They actually collided with their sister ship, an identical uh, cargo vessel, the uh, Hawaiian pilot. Uh, the Hawaiian pilot was injured and made it back into San Francisco. Um, the Lukenbach went down, uh, but there were no, uh, no fatalities. Everybody uh, survived that one. Okay, so it's been laying there for a long time, 60 some odd years, and over the years it's been decaying and uh, it's been releasing oil, however, we didn't know that at the time, all right? Now, this is a little summary, I'll get into the details. Uh, okay, so in 2002, uh, uh, oil, uh, well, we had a bunch of mystery spills uh, that occurred every, pretty much, in the winter time, during heavy storms over a, a, a period of years, starting in the 70s all the way through uh, uh, 2002. In 2002, um, there was a pretty large one, uh, and I'll get into that uh, in the next few slides here. Uh, yeah, and then there was a, you know, eventually we went in, we evaluated the ship, there was a, 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 a <laughs> There was a, 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 an operation and we, and we pulled out 85,000 gallons of bunker from the Lugenbach and sealed the remaining oil in there. And uh, it cost a lot of money to do that. Um, and as I go on, um, I just want to let you know that last year, nine birds were picked up with Lugenbach oil on their feathers. So even though we sealed it tight and it wasn't going anywhere, um, it, it's still leaking. Okay, so from 92 to 2002, uh, all kinds of oil birds were uh, found along uh, the coast of California. Um, and 2001 was the, long, uh, was the largest one. We actually picked up like 2,000 oil birds. All right, so that kind of kicked us into gear and uh, a task force was formed to find the source of this mystery oil. So it was a combination of state agencies, uh, primarily OSPR, who I work for, and U.S. Coast Guard. And no. Uh, okay, so we read all kinds of historical data, and um, and we 
finally narrowed down to the group bot. Let me get into a little more of that. So there's the, uh, this is the amount of cost. Yeah. So from essentially uh, Tamales Bay, north of there, down to Carmel, it's like 200 miles was uh, strewn with oil curves. So uh, we focused on three possible causes, right? Natural oil seeps, um, uh, repeat offending vessels. Uh, so we searched all the logs to see if like the same ship was showing up every year at the same time and possibly releasing uh, fuel inappropriately. And then, the, uh, then, then we started focusing in on sunken vessels also. So at first we got all excited because we knew about the Puerto Rican, uh, which uh, was a tank ship that uh, in uh, mid 80s or so, uh, 86 or so, it actually blew up outside the Golden Gate, broken half and sunk. So we kind of thought, well, that's the most likely uh, target. But uh, after getting a sample of the oil from, uh, from the uh, Puerto Rican, uh, it was a Chevron tanker, we got the sample from Chevron, uh, oil fingerprinting uh, didn't match up at all, so we eliminated that one. Okay, so there, was, uh, there, were, there were a lot of divers, uh, commercial and recreational, that were kind of following this investigation, and they took it upon themselves to dive on the Lukenbach. And uh, down there, they actually saw um, globules of oil uh, coming up out of the wreck. So they uh, reported it to the Coast Guard, uh, uh, and it, the Lukenbach is what they were diving on. Uh, and the Lukenbach just happened to be located underneath, the, you know, on the sea floor below where we had uh, seen uh, uh, seeps from aerial observations uh, and, and so on. Uh, Coast Guard sent an ROV down, uh, actually got a sample of oil from, uh, from the, uh, the, the tanks, and, uh, and, and sure enough, it matched up with uh, all the oil feathers that we had had from uh, 92 on uh, through uh, 2000. Yeah, and so uh, the ROE did see uh, strong currents on the bottom. Uh, the ship was broken, uh, it's actually in three pieces, and they could see uh, a swift current going through the vessel and kind of swirling up the oil. So you got a, yeah, you got a sample and then Okay, here, this table, right, this, this kind of shows the amount of, uh, uh, well, the mystery spills that we had and, uh, and, you know, the total, the numbers of birds, and, uh, and, and the ones that like matched up, you know, the, and that was a, a positive ID. And these they kind of strongly suspect because of the timing and of, of, of the uh, mystery events. So we looked at the various uh, databases. Uh, there was a, a NOAA database of shipwrecks, Coast Guard database of shipwrecks, and the State Lands Commission, who's hosting this, uh, this uh, symposium here. Uh, you know, we went through that uh, to, uh, to see well, what's, what's out there, and then we eliminated a lot of vessels just because they were uh, wooden and didn't uh, use steel, things like that. We narrowed it down to uh, three likely targets. Uh, the Independence, which is a, uh, uh, it's an aircraft carrier, that was uh, actually used uh, at Bikini Island when they were doing a nuclear testing, when they were first setting up all those bombs. Uh, um, and the history of the independence, they brought it back to California, and California said, oh, wait a second, that's radioactive, and you can't bring that into, uh, into port. So the Navy just scuttled it right out there. Uh, we really have no idea what's in it, but uh, it's, it's there. Uh, the Puerto Rican, as I mentioned, the tank vessel that kind of blew up, broke in half, and then the Luca which we already know, as I told you, was the, uh, was the culprit. Uh, this, is the, uh, this, is, this is the strand, it's the wild, the bird strand is from, uh, from 2002. Again, from pretty much uh, Tomales Bay down to Carmel. Okay, we, uh, then we plotted up the, uh, you know, the observed sheens from whatever, and the, the vessels, and there's kind of a loop box in there sitting underneath it. So that was, you know, positive evidence. But for me, the big thing was uh, we went out, uh, we, had, we hired a, a contractor to uh, uh, evaluate uh, archival satellite images. And on this particular image, and I don't have the date, but it, it was pretty recent, uh, we did see slick light features off the southeast Carolina Island, just about where the Lukenbach is. So all this evidence, you know, got us to the, to the, to the Lukenbach. Uh, 
Uh, this is cool. Uh, I think it was Titan Marine that, uh, that, that was the lead uh, salver on this, but they contracted with Fubro for a multi-beam survey, and it's kind of neat. Let's see if I can uh, make it go. Let's see. Got to be away. Hang on. I'm going to make it work. So you can see, you pay their fuel costs. <laughs> it was like, it came to like $20,000. Yeah. I know, if you're ever in Monterey, okay, you go to the aquarium and support them because these are uh, <laughs> wonderful people. And they were fun to work with. So this is what they came up with, right? So the ships look pretty intact, and except for that, that's the, uh, uh, the bow. Okay, so it actually came down bow first, right? smashed into the, into the substrate and kind of broke the bow off. Uh, here's another view with some uh, elevation contours that they put in. And it transects across the ship. So, it, I mean, everything they showed shows that the ship is intact, except for that piece of bow that uh, broke off. Uh, oh, and there's the footprint of all the servants they did. So this is the actual site of the Montebello, and that, we asked them to go up down that canyon too, see how stable that looks. And their results were, let's see. So they indicated, right, the Montebello is pitched forward, down, and impacted on the bottom, crushing and breaking off the bow section, uh, separate bow in the stack, it's intact. And, uh, and here's the important part, oh, well, that was important too, but the seafloor uh, seemed to be very stable and, uh, and, uh, and was not subjected to any rapid erosion or mass wasting. Okay, and then they made a whole bunch of other observations from, uh, from that day, and I'm not gonna go through that list unless you want me to stand there and read it, but I know you can all read it. Here's what's really interesting. Uh, to me anyway. Uh, the, the, okay, so they imaged large school of fish in the vicinity of the wreck. So, Artificial reefs, right? They, they attract, uh, they attract the wildlife. Uh, so it's not necessarily a bad thing to have a ship right down there. It's just if it's loaded with fuel and we're afraid it's gonna deteriorate and, uh, and, uh, and release, well, then that's kind of scary. Uh, this wreck was a little deeper than the, than the, the, uh, the Lukenbach, and you know, there are all kinds of theories because they, they couldn't find any oil and they said, oh, well, at that depth, you know, it's, it's all solidified, and hardened and not going anywhere. But, it was like no evidence of any oil on the vessel at all. So uh, I guess we just assume that over time uh, the oil had escaped uh, unknowingly and uh, without much harm. Here's a whoop. So here's a, kind of the uh, diagram that uh, yeah, that Noah put together. Uh, uh, Bob Schwemmer. He's the one that should be up here standing giving his presentation, but this is his field season, is what he called it. Okay. Okay, now I'm moving on to uh, NOAA's uh, most recent survey of, uh, of offshore wrecks uh, in U.S. waters. But, uh, so NOAA did a, uh, they had a large database, yes, we used it, uh, we know about it. Uh, they came up with all these, uh, they have all these shipwrecks, 20,000 shipwrecks. I mean, they're, they're, a lot of these are, you know, actual certified real threats to the environment. So most of them are on the East Coast, uh, and, and, and it's World War II. Uh, you know, there were submarines out there um, acting our vessels in the war. So they came up with on the West Coast. Let me get to that. Oh, okay. It, these are all the, yeah, I know. It's impressive, huh? They're all out there. Uh, yeah, it may be a little misleading because a lot of these are so old that, you know, they, they were like sailing ships, you know. I mean, they, they didn't use fuel until, uh, I don't know, 18 something or other. And, uh, yeah. But that's their, uh, that's their uh, library. Okay, but these are the ones uh, that I'll talk about. You can't really see them, but uh, they picked out a few for the West Coast. And let's see. Yeah, so here's the four. It's the Fern Stream, which is uh, located essentially underneath the Golden Gate Bridge. Very shallow, right in the middle of the shipping lanes. And I'll, I'll talk about that a little more. Uh, the Lukenbach, which I already uh, talked about. The Puerto Rican, which I already talked about and the Pac Baroness, which I didn't talk about, and I'm probably not gonna talk much more about it, but I'll tell you what I know about the Pac Baroness. It collided with another vessel back in the 80s, uh, kind of off of Pike Conception. We don't really have a, uh, an exact location for it, 
Um, it's not so much the fuel that, uh, that people are concerned with, it's the cargo. It was carrying uh, copper, powdered copper. And it's sitting down there and everybody's very interested in what is happening with uh, powdered copper and wildlife then on the bottom. And if we could ever get motivated, and Barry's already, already told me that they are more than willing to go down and, and explore the pack baroness, but we need to have a project for them to come into. They can't initiate things on there. Okay, so these are the vessels, the, uh, the Fern Stream in uh, San Francisco Bay, and the Lukenbach in the Puerto Rican, and then down um, here, the Pack Baroness. You know, and when they made this, uh, they had a whole bunch of criteria they went through to determine what are the, the, the most, uh, the largest threats. And uh, had to do with the age of the vessel, the size of the vessel, the cargo, and things like that. So that's that's the firm stream. This is the shipping lanes right, right there. So if we do any kind of you know <laughs> any kind of project there, it's going to be a major disruption. But there's a lot of concern about this vessel because over time it has been uh, uh, you know uh, disintegrated essentially. So here's the story of the, uh, the Fern Stream. Um, let's see if there's anything really important that I should put, uh, you know. It was fully loaded uh, and it was carrying soybeans. So we're not really worried about the cargo, it's the, uh, the fuel, the bunker. Okay, these are the questions for the Fern Stream, uh, right? Is it upright or inverted? Is it stable? How extensive is the damage? Uh, is, it a, uh, is it still a pollution threat? And what can we do about it safely? Well, I don't have any of those answers, okay? Sorry. But there is the third stream, as it was in, in San Francisco for, I don't know, at some point in time. There's the third stream going down. And this is no, uh, Noah's. I, I don't know who did the, 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 the sonar survey on this, but you can see it's, uh, it's not intact, okay? It's pretty broken up. Uh, uh, again, Bob Schwemmer uh, made this diagram relating uh, these parts to these parts, okay? I don't really know what's gonna be done about it. It's just there, and it's right now the number one threat to the environment in, uh, on the West Coast or in California, anyway, according to NOAA's database. Let's see. So they, you know, they did their investigation with those with the, uh, 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 the sonar survey, and uh, I guess it was the Coast Guard that was, that determined that it no longer possesses a substantial oil threat, uh, and there may be some residual oil in there. So I guess they're. Uh, 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 I guess what they can do is just monitor. Okay. Monitor and evaluate. That's what we say when, when you do nothing. It's really, it's, we don't do nothing. We monitor and evaluate. You know, nothing has a bad connotation. And that's it. 